making plans for night you This boy is electric Hi everyone, Happy New Year! It's that time of the month when I can give you an update on the previous month's statistics. So yeah, being the end of the year, I can give you an update on 2024 and also December 2024. What a weird month it's been. It's It's been one of those things where you, you talk about it and you mention it to other people and you're thinking, well, I'm just talking about weather, it's boring. But it has been such a weird December. It's felt like the worst solar December that I can recall, and yet the stats don't really back that up. But it's just been the amount of darkness. I think instead of comparing the amount of solar generation we've all had, we ought to be comparing the number of days in December that we had less than two kilowatt hours of generation. You know, really dark days. There's been a week, maybe two weeks worth of where it's actually been dark in the morning, dark at midday, dark in the afternoon. It's just been dark the whole time. Norfolk has been covered in a thick layer of fog, a thick layer of cloud. It's just been damp, dreary and dark. But there's always some good news, isn't there? And that is that December's over and it's time to look forward to 2025 and January with some brighter days. And that there have been a couple of bright days in December. So the stats aren't actually as bad as I thought they'd be. In fact, one of the days we had over 20 kilowatt hours of generation. Beautiful blue skies and we actually went to the beach. And it, it really does lift you, doesn't it? Because when it's dark, it's more about it's more about the misery that it brings. And I've got to say, having solar and batteries really helps lift some of that. Because even when it's dark, even when it's not very good, the battery system that we've got is keeping us on cheap rate energy and keeping our bills low. It feels good, it feels positive that we're managing our energy, managing our home, managing everything and keeping it within the cheap rate. So doing a really good job, being both green and economical. I think we've fallen a little bit lucky in December though because it's been mild. So it's probably a combination, isn't it? Uh, when it's colder, it's probably brighter. So the fact that it's been mild is probably why it's been so foggy and cloudy and not very nice. But that milder temperature has meant that we haven't used the heating so much. So my tests with our increased battery storage, um, we increased our battery storage. We did have um, five three and a half kilowatt hour pylon tech, so a total of 17 and a half kilowatt hours. And we upgraded that to include another three, four and a half kilowatt hour uh, US 5000 batteries. I think I previously reported that they were five kilowatt hours each. They're not, they're four and a half kilowatt hours each. But that increase has given me so much battery storage now. It's giving me 30 kilowatt hours. I think 20, 27 usable, something like that, because although they're capable of going down to 5% uh, depth of discharge, uh, I run them at 10% depth of discharge. So I think I've got a good 27 kilowatt hours usable battery storage. And I'm not going below 45%, even on a cold day, using the heating all the time, even having guests around where I'm heating extra rooms that I wouldn't normally heat with um, our immersion heater radiators and infrared panels. It's been interesting to try and push the bounds of the batteries and keep the heating on longer, but I still haven't really been able to push the battery into its lower depth of discharge percentages because it hasn't been that cold. So it looks like I've got spare capacity. So although I've oversized the battery and I'm not actually using all of it, it has felt really comfortable in December. I have enjoyed using the battery and enjoyed the heating from it. With um, We've been just doing normal things and I, I do find it interesting that the more I've got used to having a battery for longer and the more battery storage I've got, the more relaxed I've been about it. So it's it's been little moments where, you know, you've got up in the morning, you've had your breakfast and you're running on battery, it's really dark outside and you think, oh, I could do with putting a wash on. And you think, yeah, there's no solar, but yeah, I can still put the washing machine on, the battery covers the entire load, I can still put the dehumidifier on and dry the laundry in the house, and all of that is on battery power. And I'm not worried about the state of charge dropping below, I'm not worried about uh, using peak rate energy. I think peak rate energy, our bill for December, we used 0.7 of a kilowatt hour on peak rate. So uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy with that. That amounts to 17 pence. So I think we've talked about the weather and how dull it's been enough. Let's get on with the statistics and see how we got on in December and how that compared. Let me know in the comments below how you got on, of course, but here we go. Solar generation for the month of December 2024. Let's start with that. 
For December, a rather decent 170 kilowatt hours. But what I can note from this chart is how many days did we actually see sunshine? So maybe three, six, seven, eight, probably eight days. We actually saw a little bit of blue sky and sunshine. 13 to 14 days under two kilowatt hours of generation. So pretty black and dark all day. So we're getting towards half the month not seeing any daylight. This December was almost identical to last December on our 3.9 kilowatt array. We generated 81 kilowatt hours this year, 83 last year. On the solar edge array, 44.8 kilowatt hours versus 45.4. So very, very similar. The only big difference for us is that garden solar array, which I keep going on about. But uh, that's added 21 kilowatt hours more. So made it a little more respectable. I enjoy looking at this graph for the long term view of our generation, which gives you a good idea of what's about to come in the next few months. You can see that Januarys are often very similar to November, etc. So we know what to expect over the next month. But yep, the December total is pretty much always at the bottom of the list for the year. And this year was no exception. The day by day solar charts, 21 kilowatt hours for the garden solar array. That's 2.4 kilowatts of panels. The gable mounted and garage mounted solar panels, that's through a 2.5 kilowatt solace inverter that generated 21 kilowatt hours as well. An interesting observation is that the amount of generation we're getting from our garden array is almost always very, very similar to the array that's got our gable panels and three panels over the garage roof. Just an odd coincidence. Our main array, the first array, 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels. That's with the FIT payments, 84 kilowatt hours. I'm not sure if I've ever shared this chart. It's from Solar Edge showing the panel by panel statistics for the month. So we generated 45 kilowatt hours and uh, the panels varied in generation between 6.6 .6 and 7.0. Must be just slightly uh, different shading on those panels. Yet Solar Edge on the other charts show that we generated 44.8 kilowatt hours. So I'm not sure why there's a 0.4 of a kilowatt hour difference. Generation power peaked at just over 6 kilowatts, but I only saw that on one day. Mostly it's been around 5.5 kilowatts when the sun has been shining, which, as I said, was very rare this December. We still managed to export 100 kilowatt hours, and that's for an export credit of £15. We imported 843 kilowatt hours on the Octopus Intelligent Go tariff at 7 pence a kilowatt hour, roughly for a bill of £74. Import from the grid over time looks interesting uh, with our new strategy. Yep, December is one of the highest import months we're going to have. Export, uh, yeah, December is going to be one of the lowest, isn't it? With lower solar generation, we're obviously going to export less. And I haven't been exporting from the battery very much in December. So with a very dark December, it's interesting that just one day made it seem all better. One day with a decent solar curve with over five kilowatts of generation. We generated 21 kilowatt hours on that day. And it really was beautiful blue sunshine. So good, we went to the beach. You would just never believe that this was the same month. My energy data for December is showing consumption of 989 kilowatt hours, generation of 187, so showing a bit more, imported 889 and exported 88, so slightly different numbers, but good to share them all. My energy usage numbers, 77.4 kilowatt hours heating hot water, 273.4 kilowatt hours charging our two electric cars, and 640.3 kilowatt hours house consumption. That includes charging the battery. Energy consumption measured inside home assistant, uh, no surprises there. The Zappi, 265 kilowatt hours. Toshiba air conditioning, our main heating source, 159 kilowatt hours. Eddy hot water, 77 kilowatt hours. Kitchen, that's the washing machine and all the cooking appliances, 57 kilowatt hours. The ensuite radiator, 47 kilowatt hours. The cloakroom radiator, 42 kilowatt hours. Infrared heater in the cloakroom, 25. TV, 22. Uh, the main induction hob on top of the kitchen sockets, 16 kilowatt hours on top. And all of the internet hubs that we have, 13 kilowatt hours. The guest heater, 12. The bathroom heater, 11. Don't use those very much. Laundry, that was just 7 kilowatt hours. I think that was 
for uh, drying laundry indoors. Yeah, it's hard to click on. It's so small. And the last one there, the dehumidifier. Haven't had many issues with humidity in the house this month. Uh, three kilowatt hours. And a little bit of mixergy. Yep, we uh, did a cleanse of the tank and used one and a half kilowatt hours heating that up as well. We have temperature sensors in most of our rooms, including the loft and the garage. And that's an interesting one, especially the uh, loft, the light blue at the bottom of the chart, because it's showing that on not one day did it go below zero. So, yeah, we haven't really had any frosts in December at all. But heating in the house stayed quite consistent during December. Although the Christmas period, I think we're heating the house a little bit more than normal because we had Charlotte here. And uh, Charlotte actually just prefers the hottest house possible. So we accommodate her and turn everything up a little bit. Interesting observation on this chart, which is showing all of our individual heaters and how many kilowatt hours we're using on each of them over a long period of a couple of years here. On the right hand side, you can see the blue there, the Toshiba air conditioning is staying steady at around six kilowatt hours. And that doesn't seem to have been the case in previous years. It seems to be a bit more all over the place. So I'm using the heating more consistently, but I think the milder weather, which has been consistent too, has resulted in that as well. And we're definitely making progress towards removing the use of our log fire. This year, we've only used it four times. It's partly because it's been so mild, but also because we've chosen not to. It's the first time I can remember over the Christmas period where we haven't lit a fire for the ambience of the fire, etc. So maybe, maybe one day I can get rid of it after all. This chart is showing whether we are in credit or debit on a day-by-day -day basis with Octopus Energy. At the start of the year, we are paying them or we are being billed for energy imported. And then from March through to September, they are basically paying us for energy we are exporting. And that total credit nets off all of the bills that we have throughout the year. But we've been consistently, as you can see on the right-hand side, importing energy and paying for it or being billed for it from Octopus Energy. The good news that came in December was that Octopus Energy have renewed my 15 pence export tariff. So I've got this for another year at least. And just as I'm about to do a voiceover on this chart to say we generated 8.47 megawatt hours this year, I'm looking at the chart and just realizing, where's my garden solar? I don't think I've updated this chart correctly. That's better. Garden Solar now included, but the total of 8.47 megawatt hours was actually correct. It was just the graph that wasn't. And the last couple of numbers for the yearly totals imported 6.997 megawatt hours, so 6,997 kilowatt hours, of which only 11.5 kilowatt hours was at peak rate. And most of that was on a day when Octopus Energy gave us energy for free. That's for a total cost of £670 on the Octopus Intelligent Go tariff. We exported 7,322 kilowatt hours at 15 pence per kilowatt hour uh, exported for a total credit of £1,098.30. So yes, a nice net credit of £428. If you're interested in how we achieved that and getting rid of the fit deemed export, etc., I did a video on that recently. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and all of the other videos throughout 2024. And I hope you stay with the channel and continue to follow the journey into 2025. More content to come, more statistics, and uh, yeah, the more, more people installing solar and batteries. And I do enjoy hearing those stories of people that have been following the channel and have been encouraged to do the same. Because there's enough people out there on the haters saying, oh, how much have you spent on your system? Yeah, I might have spent 20 grand on solar and batteries or a little bit more even. But you know, who cares? Because that's been over a number of years. I haven't really noticed the losses and I would not have invested it in anything particularly other than, I don't know, an ISA, a fixed term bond at three, four percent. And I don't care about the return on investment because my strategy is about reducing my bills and having energy independence it is not about maximizing my income so for those of you that want to say but how much did it cost and it's not worth investing because i won't get my money back well that's up to you isn't it how you want to spend your money it's your choice and uh, yeah i'm just providing the information so you can make those choices with confidence about what is going to happen and what could happen to your bills if you chose to go with solar batteries, electric cars, electric heating, all of those great things. It really does work as a strategy for us and it does for a lot of people that I've heard from in the comments as well. So thank you so much for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.